Hello again, minions. Welcome back to Wheezy's FPS War College, a series designed to help you get better at shooting people in the face. Today, we're going to discuss Situational Awareness 101, and we're going to help you look before you leap. So, the overview for Situational Awareness and what we're going to cover today is, first, what is Situational Awareness? So, Situational Awareness is broken down into three parts. Knowing your goal, knowing the enemy goal, and taking action based on those goals. So as we go forward discussing ways that you can improve and implement situational awareness in your FPS games, keep in mind that this is what we're aiming for. How to focus on knowing what we want to accomplish, what the enemy is trying to accomplish, and how we should act based on those things. Additionally, we're going to focus on using a decision-making process. Uh, the two that we are going to discuss is the OODA loop, which we will discuss briefly, and the awareness cycle, which is a concept that I've basically created that is a little simpler so that you can really make this process fast and efficient. Uh, finally, we are going to break down the awareness cycle into the three phases, plan, execute, and evaluate. So covering what is situational awareness, who, what, when, where, why, and how. Situational awareness is fundamentally knowing your goal and we'll break that down into what do you want to accomplish, what is necessary to accomplish your goal, and what is available to you. So this depends on a lot of different factors and it will be specific to what you're doing at the time. So if you're playing a specific game mode, if you're playing a team deathmatch versus an objective-based game mode like a conquest or a domination, you need to know overall what it is you're trying to accomplish. And this will also apply to individual situations. If you end up in a gunfight against a person or a team, what are you trying to accomplish in that situation? And what do you have to do in order to accomplish your goal? So if it's an objective-based game mode, what do you have to do to capture objectives and win the game? If it's a slayer game mode, what do you have to do to get more kills than the other team? And what can you use to do it? What is available to you? What weapons do you have? What equipment do you have? Is there any special perks or kill streaks that the game provides you? Is there environmental stuff? All of this becomes a big, a big picture of what we're trying to do. And being mindful of that as we go gives us the opportunity to be more successful in what we're doing. So we also need to know what is the enemy's goal. What do they want to accomplish? How is that going to impact our goal? And what can we do to protect our goal from enemy interference? So in every competitive game, or at least adversarial game, anything that's not a cooperative game, you need to know what the enemy is trying to accomplish. If you're in an objective-based game mode, then they're trying to capture the objectives and you're trying to prevent them from doing that. Um, if it's a, a, like a conquest or a domination type game mode, you'll know that you're trying to capture the same objectives. If it's something like search and destroy or a one-sided attack and defend like a rush-based game mode uh, in Battlefield, then their goal is to destroy an objective and your goal is to protect that objective. So you need to know what they're trying to accomplish so that you can determine how that's going to impact what you're trying to accomplish. It's more straightforward in Slayer game modes. What are they trying to do? Kill you. What are you trying to do? Kill them. How does that impact your goal? Well, if they kill you, you can't kill them. So what can you do in any situation and in any potential match to protect your goal from the enemy interfering or trying to stop you from achieving your goal? And next, we're going to do the important thing, which is take action based on those goals. So which way should you go? What actions should you take? And what can disrupt your actions? So when we're talking about knowing your goal, knowing the enemy's goal, that's all well and good as far as the awareness, but situational awareness is only valuable to us in as much as we use that to take actions to achieve our goals. So if you're in a Slayer game mode, say the enemy team has an area locked down, which way should you go? Should you go straight head on into them and try and fight them? Should you try and flank around? What can the enemy do to disrupt what you're doing? So if you decide to flank the enemy, can they pivot on you? Which way are you going to be vulnerable from? These are all things we want to keep in mind as we're going through the game 
and we will break down this in more detail on individual scenarios and give you a process for how to go through this. So try not to get overwhelmed by the overarching concepts that we're covering here. But again, to reiterate, what are we going to keep in mind? What do we want to do? How is the enemy trying to stop us? And therefore, what action should we take to achieve our goal? So how do we accomplish all of this stuff that we just discussed? We are going to use a decision-making process. And I will cover two decision-making processes, the OODA loop and the awareness cycle. Now, we'll break these down here, but first let's talk about the OODA loop. The OODA loop actually is a larger concept. I did not come up with this. This is actually primarily a military-based concept. And what it does is it consists of four phases. And this is where the acronym OODA comes from. Observe, orient, decide, and act. So this is a process developed, by, I believe, by military personnel, probably a general or something like that. I forget. You can look up, you can look up the details of that. I'm not here for a history lesson. Um, but this is a way to, in a military situation, in a strategic st situation or even a tactical situation, to identify the process that soldiers go through in order to try and accomplish their goals. They I observe, so they identify and understand what the problem is that they're trying to deal with. They orient themselves, which is to analyze the potential solutions. They decide, which is to choose which of those potential solutions is the best solution. And they act, which is to implement that solution. And as after they've acted, they then repeat the loop. So they would reobserve where are they in this problem cycle. Now, if you're like me, some of that might sound a little bit redundant to you. In the in the military tactical scenario, this actually fits their planning and execution process a little bit more closely. For a FPS game, we're going to use a simpler approach that I have called the awareness cycle. And those of you who aren't familiar with the acronym KISS, it's keep it simple, stupid. So the awareness cycle, we can break down into three phases. The plan phase, which involves what action is going to accomplish our goal. The execute phase, which is to take that action. And the evaluate phase, which is, did it work? What now? Now, this is much simpler than the OODA loop and and it's fundamentally what you do all the time anyway, but by bringing awareness to this process, it allows you to break down what it is you're doing during a game into something that can be improved and optimized. So, so instead of just blindly acting, which is what some people do and why you may be having limited success in games, is if you just act and respond to everything, then you never really get to go through the plan phase. And coming up with a tactical or strategic decision for how to win the game or win the engagement or accomplish whatever goal it is you're trying to accomplish, you need to have some sort of plan in place to do that. And then as you're taking action towards that plan, you have to constantly be evaluating, okay, is what I'm doing actually working? I'm sure many of you have been in Slayer game modes or even objective game modes with teammates and you've watched them run into enemy gunfire where the enemy has a defended position, get killed, respawn, run back to that exact same location, get killed, respawn, run back, hope they can maybe change the tide of the battle and just get lucky and get a couple of kills, you know, get killed, respawn, maybe they change to a sniper kit and decide that they're just going to try and pick at people because they don't know what else to do. I'm sure you've encountered this. By using the awareness cycle, we are going to break this and we are going to have more success in every situation that we encounter. So let's break down stage one, the planning stage. What is our goal? What is the enemy goal? And where are you vulnerable? So when we're planning, we're talking about when we broke down the high level situational awareness. If we want to make a plan, we have to understand what we're trying to accomplish what the enemy is trying to accomplish, and where are you vulnerable? What will stop you from achieving your goal? So let's say we're playing an objective game mode. Let's say it's a search and destroy. Our goal is to plant the bomb on the objective. What is the enemy's goal? To kill you, to stop you from planting the bomb, or to disarm it if you do plant it. So where are you vulnerable? Depending on how the game implements this game mode, your, your vulnerability is going to be on how the defensive team sets up to protect the objectives. And so your planning cycle is, is based around, okay, what do I need to do in order to plant the bomb on the objective 
without getting killed and without allowing them to disarm it. And that will be something that you evaluate on a mi micro level as you go. So you're moving towards the objective, say you observe where some of the enemies are, and you're like, okay, well, I'm not going to just run straight to the bomb, I'll probably get shot. So if I were the enemy, where would I be hiding? Maybe I can find a flanking route to flush out the enemy positions before I try to plant the bomb. What's my team doing? This is the plan stage. What is, what is your plan of attack for achieving your objective? Let's moving on to stage two, the execute phase. So where is the enemy? Where are you going? And where are you vulnerable? So again, this is an extension on the first part. We've planned it. Let's say we want to attack the objective. We've decided we're not just going to run straight at it, right? Because the enemy's probably going to be around there. So what are we going to do? Where is the enemy? The enemy's probably defending that objective. Where are we going to go? We're going to first try and identify where the enemy is so we can hopefully eliminate them before we plant the objective. Or, you know, maybe in another situation, maybe what you're trying to do is distract the enemy and draw them away from a location, either so a teammate can plant in a different location or so you can double back and plant, right? And then where are you vulnerable? Where can the enemy flank you from? What is, what is, what part of your plan, what would mess up your plan? What could the enemy do? If they are in a location you don't expect, what if they rushed at the beginning and now they're coming from behind you in your spawn area. These are things you have to be aware of and, and keep track of during the execution phase. And then when you're moving on to our final phase, the evaluation phase, did you accomplish your goal? What has changed? And how is your plan affected? So did you plant the bomb? Or did you eliminate the enemy, right? If you killed the enemy, now what's changed? There are fewer enemies to defend the, the bomb. How's your plan affected? Are you still trying to kill the enemy or are you ready to go and try and plant the bomb? If it's a Slayer game mode, right? Did Have you did, have you won the game? Have you killed the enemy? Okay, are they ahead of you? Are they behind you? Is your team piling up? If there's like a line establishing and your team and the other team are just shooting at each other and it's relatively equal or the other team is, is taking the lead, then that changes things. Now maybe instead of just attacking head on, you need to execute a flank to help give your team an advantage to distract the enemy that's that's keeping your team locked down. How does that affect your plan? And what do you need to do to make a new plan? So we're gonna go through and give some examples of the awareness cycle. First, we will give a general gameplay example of the awareness cycle, and then we will break it down into what I call macro and micro examples of situational awareness. So first, let's discuss the awareness cycle as a whole with this gameplay example. Okay, so this gameplay clip is gonna be Cold War. We're playing a game of domination. So we're gonna run through the plan, execute, evaluate process on this clip. Now, starting out here, we have got, um, the enemy has two points captured to R1. And so what we're trying to do is, in domination, you gain score, You you win the game by capturing and holding more points than the enemy. So the first thing that we want to do is capture more points than the enemy. So even though we've got the lead here, we want to make sure that we are going to capture at least two points and hold them for the duration of the game. So we'll just start going through the gameplay and I'll point out things as we go. So um, we're holding the C point here and from my understanding of this map here I'm, I'm kind of watching where the enemies are B is always hotly contested because it's the center point so I'm going to try and push the C uh, objective um, leading with the simtex gives me an idea of if there's any enemies up there I got to clear and then I'm gonna be watching for enemies in this area because this is closer into their spawn now since B is so hotly contested that is where they're primarily looking and now that I'm in the A objective it's gonna kind of change the calculus for them. So let's pause here real quick. And what we've got is I'm capturing the A point. The B point actually has been captured during this time by our team. So what's going to happen is A side is essentially going to be the enemy team spawn. And now I am going to be drawing their attention to A. So unless the spawn flips, then the enemy team is going to be spawning near A and is going to be pushing this position. So I need to make sure that I have a good defensible position. I put a trophy system down and I have a sentry turret to help guard my flank. And um, I'm going to be looking for the enemies attacking this point. Get a couple kills there. I have a napalm strike. 
So I want to move back to an unexpected position. You don't want to remain in the same location where enemies can see every time. Try and use an Apalm Strike to distract the enemy. And that guy goes after my sentry gun, so it's a good distraction, but I don't get the kill. So now I'm, I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one gunfight and trying not to get bogged down in this. I use the Semtex to try and flush him out, but he's got Flak Jacket. And I want to take some time to heal up, especially since I have a teammate there. Uh, he steps in and cleans that up rather than me pushing it and getting killed in the engagement. So um, once again, let's pause here. That engagement caused this guy to kind of recapture uh, or make progress on recapturing A. So we're going to try and pull that back down and reevaluate the situation once that's done. So now that A has been cleared, I have to figure out, okay, well now that looks like an enemy uh, a teammate has spawned here. So we can see um, here now that a teammate has spawned over here, which implies that the spawns have flipped. And so what we're going to do is look that the enemy only has the B point and we are, we had the C spawn, so what we can expect as C is also being captured here, um, that the enemy is spawning at C now. And so what we really wanna do is support uh, capturing B and then pushing the enemy back into C since they're about to make that capture. So um, now that A is captured and our spawn has flipped, we're pushing back towards C uh, to help defend that. I'm using a stun check because it's very common for people to be up there. I did get a hit marker, so I know someone's up there. Um, I still want to look for danger here. Um, as I'm evaluating in here, the idea is to capture C, but considering that I got a stun check on the guy who's upstairs to my right over here, um, See if we can be fancy with this stuff. Um, the guy that's up here <laughs> above, I can't, I really don't think that's the guy that came down that I just killed. It is possible that that is, um, but I still have to be aware that there's a guy up there, so I can't simply uh, push into capturing the C objective because I potentially have. Um, a guy upstairs who could come in behind me and flank me, as well as the rest of their team spawning out here at the C objective with access to that back door. So what I really want to do uh, is check and make sure that the area upstairs is cleared out and then uh, with that general amount of safetyness, right? Because behind me where I came in, my team is spawning that way. So I have a reasonable amount of safety from that direction. Um, so if I can clear out the upstairs, then I know that I have basically kind of a safe area behind me that way um, where I can then focus uh, my attention on where the enemy is likely to come from to help support uh, well, not necessarily capture C, but as B is currently being captured by my team, uh, keep the enemy pinned down here in C so that we can have a uh, two cap. So going back in here, there is a little jump here, which I missed the first time. Um, checking for enemies around me if I hear footsteps and there was some gunfire, someone got killed. Um, but looking up here, we've got it pretty clear and I'm listening for footsteps of people going underneath. So I wanna make sure that I've got a reasonable amount of security up here before I move on. So as there's footsteps around me, I'm making sure these guys are around. I decide to hop off um, because I heard footsteps underneath me, the guys weren't coming up and going back down could potentially uh, be a bad situation. So what I did was decided to, to reestablish this line where my team is spawning because I know my team is gonna be coming uh, essentially this way. And so what I want to do is help reestablish that as opposed to coming down from upstairs down into this area, in which case I would have to worry about enemies out here as well as enemies coming from their spawn this way. So instead I decided to jump down even though I know that was a little bit more risky and see if I could clear those guys out and then push back in. Now since I got killed there, um, that didn't work out. What I was hoping to do was clear that area and push back in. So now that I've respawned, now I have to reevaluate. So based on what we saw, we have uh, A and B captured here, which is good news. We've got two caps and we've got the lead as well. So um, the game is actually getting close to an end. So all we really need to do rather than pushing a C cap is just basically hold A and B. And in order to do that, I kind of want to push back to roughly that position I was in before. Um, just because it is a good area to kind of help 
keep them pushed back to sea. So um, I'm moving out here, still being aware of where the enemy is going to be coming from. Now where I am, the enemy is over here at sea, right? And so they're going to be spawning and coming from essentially um, these areas here and potentially this door here. So an area through here where I can watch and keep them pinned back and keep them away from B would be a good position for me to take uh, in order to try and just close out this game. They're starting to leak out from underneath the arcade there. So I'm looking at where they're going. They're potentially pushing back up to A on that side. So I can't really control that. I take shots from the side and I'm kind of locked in here. So now I've got to make a new plan. So I just killed that guy over there who I was keeping an eye on, but I did take shots from up in this area. You can still see that guy kind of shown on the radar. Um, and I have a reasonable security that the guy that I killed over here is kind of the bulk of the people pushing out of arcade. So really what I have to do is use this cover and kind of keep myself safe and use that area to kind of set up a line here watch toward where I was getting shot from, from, try to kill that guy, and try to keep the enemy from moving into B here. So the guy that was shooting at me there has kind of moved out. I get to knock him out. And now we're at 198, so we then won the game. So um, that is just kind of a quick uh, example of how you can use the plan, execute, and evaluate cycle in order to, uh, in order to achieve an objective, in this case, we had the smaller objectives of capturing A, keeping the enemy at C, defending B, and the larger objective of winning the game. So we will continue to move forward and break down our macro and micro examples uh, for situational awareness. Okay, so now that we've broken down that higher level example, let's get into macro situational awareness, which just win, baby. This is high level situational awareness for winning the game. So if we want to win the game, what do we need to do? We need to complete the objective, we need to stop the enemy, and we need to evolve and adapt. So versus micro situational awareness, macro situational awareness is what would be more aptly called strategy versus tactics. Strategy is the overall plan that we have for achieving our objective, winning the game. Tactics is our low-level strategy for beating the enemies in, in encounters, winning gunfights, flanking maneuvers. Those are tactics or low-level. So when we want to win the game, we have to focus on completing the objective, stopping the enemy, evolving and adapting, and iterating through this cycle in a way that makes sure that not only are we winning our engagements, which would be tactical or micro, but we're moving towards the larger of objective of helping our team win the game or in an individual game mode of us winning the game. So let's break this down in another gameplay example that focuses on a high level macro situational awareness. Okay, so now for our macro example of situational awareness, we're gonna go to a game of Battlefield 4. This is Conquest. And to start out, what you'll see here is that we have uh, these flashing objectives here. So this point in the game, we have, uh, we are currently losing. The enemy uh, actually, because of recent captures, the enemy actually has fewer points than we do now. So we have four points to the enemy's three. Um, but we can see that the enemy is capturing all of these points right now. Um, and they currently hold these down here. So what we're going to want to do is is help support a line that we can defend. So with as large as these battlefield maps are, it can be hard to kind of do that. But generally, when you look at here, you say, okay, well, what options do we have? These are being captured, all right? We hold this one and it's pretty safe. You can see our guys here, although they hold F. So what do we wanna do in order to increase our chances of winning the game? We wanna make sure that we hold these points because that will create a line like this that we control our four points to their three. And these three points are actually very close together, which means that, and this one's by our spawn. So this one's relatively safe for our spawn. And essentially, whoever can hold all three of these points will win this game. If you can get F as well, that'd be a bonus because then you can create a line like that. Um, but 
right now, with these three points being captured, although they're still currently under our control, and this point being enemy controlled, and you can see we have teammates all through here. Some teammates here kind of heading towards F, but no teammates at F. Our best play is to help try and support keeping these areas uh, captured right here. So let's get back into where we spawn in here and uh, start watching what we do. So I jump in. Uh, I'm an engineer class in this gameplay, so I know that I can help support uh, destroying vehicles. And as I've spawned in, what I see is essentially that um, B is being captured here. So it's you know currently being captured. A, I can see down here we hold and it's pretty steady. So I've got to try and help eliminate the people that are currently capturing B. So I go to search this building, looking to see if I can find people. Get surprised by a guy at the top of the stairs. But that happens. So now plan, execute, evaluate. Evaluate. Did we achieve what we hoped? No, we're not preventing this capture. So when we get back to our next spawn, um, we need to make another plan. So what is the plan now? Well, we can see that kind of our team is solidified on A. C is now under our control. Some of our team's attacking F. B is where we just got killed by that guy. And in reality, what we're going to want to do is continue to uh, help support capturing B. So that is going to be our choice for our next play here. Um, I considered spawning on the helicopter, decided it's better to have a kind of control of where I come in. So by choosing the A spawn, I know that I can actually control my engagement. So since we hold A, we can assume there are probably some enemies, you know, in this area roughly um, moving over from the uh, B point, rather the other way, moving in from the B point. So by spawning over here at A, what we allow ourselves to do is create, you know, have some predictability about which direction enemies are going to be coming from. So in my screen here in front of me, I know that we're going to be having enemies potentially coming from here and maybe coming from here, but probably not this soon, uh, since what they're trying to do is, uh, since they've just captured B, so they'll probably be moving this way. But I know roughly where the enemies are going to be coming from, so it makes it safer for me to move towards B. And in general, what I want to attempt to do, actually, as I'm checking for enemies here, is my goal is largely going to be to, um, let's see, let's see if I can do this. Uh, uh, what I want to do is kind of uh, operate a flanking route on this side so that uh, I don't end up walking straight into the middle of where all of the enemies are going to be and getting killed from multiple directions. I want to make sure that I'm controlling the direction of the engagements uh, by trying to use flanking routes when I can. So I'm going to start moving towards the outside, still being aware that there could be enemies in the area. I uh, decide to move up and get a, an advantageous point to see if I can find out where the enemies are around as I continue to try and move towards there. Guy comes down from the roof managed to get a kill there and so now I'm still trying to move towards B um, I get killed there and uh, that's unfortunate you know big games like this it happens but now it's time to once again plan execute evaluate so let's look at what's happened now well now we can see that actually we've pretty much resolidified these points so we got teammates 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 we've pretty much captured this. I'm going to skip ahead to the end of the game and we're going to reevaluate our situation here. So we have got a significant lead here. It's looking good that we're going to win the game. Um, we have, we're losing this C point here. Um, we have B. We've got a lot of teammates at B. We've lost A and there's a tank there. So our lot, we've got D and G here, so we've got sort of this line here that we want to expand. So we want to kind of recapture this point and this point. Since A and B are so close together, our best bet is going to be to try and support solidifying this area. Again, we've already got a significant lead, um, so right now it's you know currently three points to three, so it's you know a, a symmetrical burn right now. So if it just holds here, we would still win, but. We want to try and increase those chances, not let them get a foothold by helping re-engage 
this position here. So again, in order to try and control engagements, we're going to try and um, spawn in on B as I'm considering my options. And as an engineer, I got helicopters around and I got people. So uh, I've got an opportunity here to kind of also have some more fun because we've got a lead. So I've got some more flexibility at what I can do um, rather than it being super urgent that I just gung ho in to capture the point. So I'm going to use my, my small here to try and deal with this helicopter that's been trying to harass me and get a hip fire rocket there. The transport chopper comes in, kind of gets hung up on the roof, so I know it'll be mostly stationary, so that can give me an opportunity to shoot at it. But I saw a guy bail out, and I want to be prepared to engage him. Take that out. I also know that I took shots from my left over there, so I'm aware of that. Um, right now, I just killed this guy ahead of me. I know this transport chopper that I damaged is probably heading off that way. But I also know that I'm taking damage from here. Uh, it's actually probably slightly in front of me that way. Um, but right now this rock is giving me cover so I can consider whether or not I want to take another shot at the helicopter or if I perhaps want to maybe move up here past cover so that I can get a better angle on the guy that's shooting at me. Um, but I know that I'm in danger from here. Um, so down on the minimap from this area. So I want to make sure that I am smart about how I engage that. So I'm looking back towards where I think I got shot from to see if I can find that enemy using cover where I can. I spot him on the second floor of that building. Don't get him with the bullets, so I throw a grenade and then I use the grenade to reposition. So what I've done is I've hoped that that grenade has caused him to take cover and so now I can reposition and so when he pops back out he'll look at where I was and I'll be in a different location. So now I move in from an alternate angle. I still roughly know where he is. I think I just saw a flash of him up there too. So I'm seeing if I can find an angle to engage him where he won't expect me. So he's moved in there. I get to pick him off move up better, see if I can see the enemies that are attacking A and help support that capture as the tickets continue to wind down. So uh, from up here, I know I'm, I know I'm vulnerable because essentially I can get kind of shot from every direction up here. I'm relatively certain that there aren't many enemies on up here in this area, um, which is good. Um, and I know that the enemies are down here capturing this area. So what I'm trying to do is use this to get a vantage point to see where the enemies are um, and see if I can gauge them with the small amount of tickets left. So part of this is also trying to just get some last second kills before the game is over. So moving towards the A point to try and help uh, recapture it. Guy pops up in front of me. Those shots were... I don't know what happened to most of those shots. <laughs> but, oh well. <laughs> I, uh, I got killed there. The, uh, the respawn here, you're gonna see, we got eight tickets left, it's ticking fast. We've basically captured the entire map, so the game's over in a couple seconds. I decided to jump in this helicopter, dive out, <laughs> celebrate victory. And uh, that is an example of how you use macro situational awareness in order to win a game and how it can be used to not just control how you in use engagements, but how you use those engagements to contribute towards a larger objective. All right, so now that we've covered a macro example of situational awareness, let's break down micro situational awareness. 1v1 me, bro. If we want to win an encounter in an effort to support our overall objective of winning the game, we need to first, stay alive, second, kill the enemy, and third, move on to the next. So. FPS games, first person shooters, at their very nature, are about shooting, killing the enemy. Whether it's a, if it's a Slayer game mode, that's all very direct uh, as far as making sure that you're just winning more gunfights than the enemy is. Although strategy can matter in that as well as far as positioning, flanking, things like that. But the key ingredient to winning encounters is to stay alive. So if you're in a situation where you're about to die, then you need to make something change. So that's why I put this in order of importance. Step one is stay alive. Step two is kill the enemy. It, unless it's a, a desperate situation or there's some specific tactical advantage gained from sacrificing yourself to try and kill the enemy, our first priority is to stay alive. After we have given ourselves the best chance to stay alive, then we want to give our best effort to killing the enemy 
and repeating that cycle. We cannot win the game. We cannot complete our objective if we aren't able to stay alive to complete the objective, whether it's uh, an objective-based game mode like Conquest, you can't capture points if you're dead, <laughs> you can't plant bombs if you're dead, you can't defuse bombs and defend areas if you're dead, and of course in Slayer-based game modes, you can't kill the enemy if they've killed you. So we wanna make sure that in micro-situational awareness, we're using the same awareness cycle, plan, execute, evaluate, on each fight that we enter. And we may be dealing with a single enemy or multiple enemies, and we will have to adapt as we go. So let's go over a gameplay example of micro-situational awareness um, and some examples of how we will use a plan, use tactics to try and win engagements. All right, so for our micro-situational awareness, we are going to a game of Team Deathmatch in Modern Warfare, and we're gonna just jump right into this, and as you know, the objective in Team Deathmatch is just to kill the enemy. So the first thing that we're gonna do when we spawn in is figure out where we wanna look for the enemy. So we have got um, our teammates spawned in here, and since that gives us an idea that we've spawned in this corner of the map, we can be relatively certain that the enemies are going to be spawning at the other end of the map. And so that is where we're going to uh, pay our attention. And so right now I'm looking for a position advantage to look and see if I can kill any, any enemies that are going to be coming up the street. Now, up here is a pretty predictable position, so I want to make sure I'm using cover and being careful. I don't necessarily want to stay up here for an extended period of time. It's an opportunity to maybe get an idea of where the enemies are, get a couple of kills while we're up here. So once I get that kill, again, I don't want to stay up in a vulnerable position. So I want to reevaluate what's happened. Now in, in Slayer game modes, um, situations change pretty rapidly. So here, what we want to keep an eye on is where our teammates are. And here you can see that our teammates are kind of on this side of the map. So it gives you an idea of where the enemy spawns are going to be. So because we're kind of spawning in this corner of the map, you expect the enemies to be coming from, well, just in general from where our teammates are this way. But you can expect the spawns to be somewhat in that back corner of the map, where our team's going to be moving in towards them that way. Or maybe they won't be spawning in this part of the map, but they may be moving that direction from where they spawned over there. So we need to be aware of enemies essentially in this area. We know that we've got teammates over here. So probably if we're going to look for kills, if we wanted safety, we would work with our teammates and work out here for a flank. But if we wanna make sure we're getting kills, the way to go, since they're gonna be roughly flowing this way, is gonna be for us to kind of come this direction and and meet them, anticipate their movement, and get an advantageous position for killing them. So here I've kind of checked there, and here we can see that they are in fact moving this way. Now I have taken shots at this guy and I did not get a kill, so now he knows where I am, and I know roughly where he is, but I've lost position of him behind this. So I've got a couple of options. One, I can try and wait and see if he'll re-engage this, either by staying out in the open, which would be stupid, or by taking cover behind this car, which would be smarter, and then I could look to see if he wants to peek around this way. However, that puts me in a position of waiting and reacting to him. If he chooses to come back out, then I might be able to beat him, but in reality, he expects me to be here. So even if he does re-peek here, he's gonna know where to look for me, and it's gonna be more of a fair fight than I'd like. Since I saw him moving that way, and that was already the direction he was heading when I saw him, so I started shooting him after he was already headed that way, the better thing for me to do is gonna be to execute kind of a flank, a flank on this position if he re-peeks it. If he doesn't re-peek it, and if he continues the direction he was heading, then once again, I am heading him off and trying to get to a defended position um, further along behind this building here so that uh, when he comes around from that side potentially I will have a defensible position in order to engage him. So rather than waiting for him to peek I do a stun check to see if he stayed there. I do get a stun hit which means that I know basically that he stayed behind that van and so now as I'm already flanking around this way I know that roughly he is here and so if he stays there now that I've stunned him, if I get to this corner, I should have a decent position of cover with which to engage him and take him out. So I still want to be cautious in case he's pushed up this way faster, but he's just waiting there for the stun to wear off and I get an easy kill. So now I'm again looking for what to do. Uh, I have moved into this area where I expect the team, the other team to be coming from. They will be kind of coming from this way. 
Um, they could even potentially be in this area because our team is still kind of where they were a few seconds ago. I've kind of put myself in a position where I have to be aware of danger from every direction. So now I'm trying to pick, okay, well, I've got some cover here where I killed this guy. What's my next move? What my, I'm gonna try and do is stick to the edge of the map here and move forward towards the enemy and see if I can get more kills. As I come around this van here, I can look and see if they're coming up the street. If that's clear, I'm gonna move across towards this building uh, and start moving up the edge of the map. But immediately I hear footsteps beside me and a guy that I didn't expect close to me. I take shots, I do not get the kill. So now, we're, again, we're dealing with one-on-one -on -one engagements. I got a guy here, you know, moving roughly that direction, but we can't be entirely sure. So I can either chase him, in which case he knows that I'm, that I'm looking for him, so he could turn around and engage me as I come through that door, or kind of reverse this flank that I did earlier and see if either he hunkers down in here and I can just be at an unexpected position, or if he continues through that direction, maybe I can get cover here and engage him uh, from a position of advantage. So this surprised me. <laughs> I am relatively certain that the guy that I just shot in here can't have possibly gotten out here that quickly. So this surprised me. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just engage this firefight in a bit of a panic. And then I'm still keeping in mind that even though this guy looks like he's got the same skin as the guy that I was chasing, I still am pretty sure there's a guy in that building. So I get that kill luckily, and I'm moving over here, expecting that if there was, if that's not the same guy that was in this building, then he's still in here potentially moving towards the outside. So I wanna use this corner and this wall as cover uh, to try and engage someone potentially coming from that direction. So I'm checking the door. I see movement, there is the guy in there. So he was still in there. I lose that shot and now it's just fast reaction. So now I'm just trying to get a turn on him because he's running from me. So I'm gonna immediately come out here, turn this direction, hopefully kill him. But something interesting has also happened. I've just run out of ammo. And so I'm gonna do a pistol switch to re-engage this rather than trying to reload my last six bullets. So I win that fight. I can reload my last six bullets. But then a guy comes back, revenges me, <laughs> gives me lots of shots. Now this is probably one of the guys that I was fighting against earlier. Um, coming back for revenge. Oh, as that's kind of glitched out on me. Um, but, uh, you know, there's only so much you can do. So what happened is in this engagement, I managed to turn the, a failure to kill a couple of guys into three different kills just by using smart engagement techniques. So that is an example of micro situational awareness and how it applies to individual engagements. All right, now that we've covered macro situational awareness and micro situational awareness, let's go back and sum up what we learned today in situational awareness 101. We covered what is situational awareness, knowing our goal, knowing our enemy and what their goal is, and taking action based on those. We learned about the awareness cycle, the plan, execute, and evaluation cycle that we will continuously be using to try and achieve not only our overall objective, but also to win our individual encounters. And we discussed macro versus micro situational awareness. And we learned the difference between winning the game versus winning the fight, but how we use the same awareness cycle plan and, and loop to achieve both of those objectives. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully you learned something really good there. This has been Situational Awareness 101. Obviously the idea behind Weezy's FPS War College is to give you a collegiate level education in pwning noobs. So if you guys liked this video, please leave me a like. Share this with your other friends who need to learn how to pwn the noobs. Um, trust me, they when they get to this part, they won't think, hey, this guy sent me this video because he thinks I suck. No. You just want them to be better so that you guys can kick butt all the time. Butt, ass, whatever it's going to be. Let's kick it. <laughs> Subscribe for more of this. There's plenty more coming. If you guys missed my Map Movement 101 module, go check that out and look forward for everything that I've got coming forward in the future, including tactical breakdowns on individual points as well as other large, all-encompassing modules. So I appreciate you guys watching, and I will talk to you soon.